Al Jazeera Podcasts. Today, life at the center of an election misinformation storm. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. A video came out of a migrant 30 miles away eating a cat. Haitians in the state of Ohio are fighting back against baseless and racist claims. So just how has the rhetoric affected the community? I'm Malika Bilal, and this is The Take. As a Haitian, I wanted to set the record straight that we don't eat the pets, the dogs. Sophia Perales is a Haitian community organizer in Ohio. For the past few weeks, she's been discussing the impact of racist misinformation on her community. When we talked to her on the phone, she said it's become a difficult situation. It's been a lot. I'm just tired. And I just want this to be behind us. The rumors kicked into gear with a Facebook post suggesting that Haitian immigrants in Springfield had abducted and butchered a missing cat. Even though the woman who made this post deleted it, the damage was done. A screenshot of the post went viral and found its way into the U.S. election when Republican vice president candidate J.D. Vance tweeted about it. Donald Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, is amplifying a viral claim on social media about migrants in a small town in his home state of Ohio. In a post on X, he wrote that there are reports of illegal Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, abducting and eating people's pets. But Sophia was shocked to see former President Donald Trump bring it up during his debate with Kamala Harris the next day. I didn't think that um, that would come out of his mouth. So when he said that, um, I was turned off. I just turned off the TV. I I was not interested to listen to anything because I was like, just, uh, okay, that's enough now. The misinformation has turned Haitians in Ohio into targets of harassment and threats. But some are now fighting back. An immigration advocacy group in Springfield has filed a lawsuit against the candidates, holding them responsible for 33 bomb threats the city's received in the past few weeks. Sophia says one family she spoke to is considering leaving Springfield altogether. Why? It's because the daughter, uncomfortable that other children are asking her about eating pets. So that's affecting our children And this is not necessary. That rhetoric is going on. It's all fake. It's not true. My guest today has been on the ground in Springfield, covering the story for Al Jazeera. My name is Inara Virji. I'm a field producer with Al Jazeera English. I'm in news and I'm based in Washington, D.C., which is where I am now. So Springfield, Ohio, the center of this political firestorm that none of the residents asked for. When you and your reporting team from Al Jazeera English set foot there, what did you see? We got there and we went straight to City Hall. We knew that we wanted to film um, City Hall and see what it was like around there because we had uh, read about and heard about the bomb threats against uh, City Hall. And we got there and someone pointed out to us that there was a man carrying a rifle Mm. um, in the courtyard in City Hall. And This was not um, a police officer or some sort of security official. This was um, a man in a T-shirt. So we saw him and saw he was carrying a rifle, which is legal in Ohio. It's an open carry state. Mm. But it was indicative of sort of the tension in the town and what's happening. Okay, so just one little anecdote sign of the times in Springfield right now. Um, City Hall was one of the places that had to be shut down because of one of these bomb threats. The bomb threats all turned out to be hoaxes and there was no bomb. There were no explosions. But talk to me about the feeling that residents must have to be living through threats, bomb threats, all of that. Yeah, people were frustrated. We spoke to, um, so there are two 
um, colleges in the town, um, Wittenberg University, Clark College, and they um, had to go remote for a week um, because of threats to those campuses. And we spoke to a student at Wittenberg, and he said that he found it really frustrating that there were these threats and um, his family was concerned about his safety. Um, and uh, he was he was frustrated by all the attention on the town um, and said that it's not something that the town needed. Trump has said that he wants to go to Springfield and he said that he's going to do that in the next few weeks. And the mayor said, don't come, basically. Mm -hmm. And that was that's what we heard from a lot of residents there. Mm -hmm. The last thing we need is big politicians in our town. So I don't appreciate any of it. I don't like it. And um, we spoke to a lot of um, people from Haiti, a lot of Haitian immigrants. And um, it was very difficult to get people to speak on camera because they're really scared. Hmm. They're scared of what could happen to them if they could, if they speak, if they're on camera, if someone sees them, they're scared about threats in person. They're scared about threats over social media. So there's a lot of frustration over the attention to the town and um, also a lot of fear about what might happen yeah. with um, the attention that they're getting. Right. I imagine that puts you and your team in sort of an awkward position because you're there to talk to people about what they need now that this spotlight has been shown on them, but they're also saying, we don't want all of this. This is bringing unwanted attention. Can you tell me about Springfield and its people? Like, what kind of town is this? Who are the Haitian residents who live there, what was it like? Um, it's a small town in Ohio. Um, it's about an hour's drive from um, Columbus. That's the closest big city. One of those towns that has like a couple of main streets and um, it has uh, John Legends from there. It has Did you know that? like a theater there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and um, it it's... It's one of those towns, especially in that part of the U.S., um, that's known as the Rust Belt, um, it's where there was a lot of manufacturing, but some of those manufacturing jobs have gone, gone away. And so there are towns that are in need of a bit of a like revival. Um, when I say that you can see this, driving through the town, walking through the town, you see buildings that are in disrepair, mm. um, houses that are in disrepair, but you also see like... There were newer businesses there. There are thriving businesses. And part of that is because of this influx of um, Haitian immigrants. The town is home to about 60,000 people. Um, there aren't exact numbers on the number of Haitian immigrants who are there, but it's around 12,000. Mm. So they make up a large part of the population. Well, the Haitian migrants that are there, they're there legally. I think that, of course, yes. is worth saying here in the hubbub of this fight over immigration in the U.S. And many of them have temporary protective status. Is that right? What yes, drew people right. here? Um, jobs. Um, Haiti is a country that has gone through a lot of turmoil, um, really since its founding. And um, with the... Um, there is a lot of unrest in Haiti right now. And um, people, uh, Haitians migrated uh, to the U.S., also to South America, Latin America. And they basically word of mouth brought them to Springfield. They heard about jobs there. They heard about opportunity. And um, some of the people that we spoke to, that I spoke to said that's exactly why they were there. They wanted to make money. <laughs> they want to be able to support their families. It's all about opportunity and money, which is what has brought immigrants to the U.S. for centuries. So how is this misinformation playing into the U.S. election? That's after the break. So, Anar, I want to bring this back to politics because that is what is at the heart of this. We've been talking about people on the receiving end of former President Trump and his running mate, J.D. Vance's baseless and racist comments who live in Springfield. But there are also Trump supporters who live in Springfield. And you spoke to someone, you, you spoke to some of them. 
one of those supporters yes. told you something I found really interesting that he doesn't agree, but talk to me about who you talk to. So um, the first day that we were there, we spoke to people. One of them was a Trump supporter. He was wearing a hat indicating that he um, supported Trump. And he said that um, he wasn't happy that Trump made these comments about Springfield. Um, and then he said he still loves the man. And um, I think it's interesting because some Trump supporters that we spoke to are unhappy about these comments and about the attention and the threats that they have brought upon Springfield, but they still support Trump. Okay, I need you because this is what you do. You break it down for international audiences. So I need you to break that down for me because... And are you have reported on and talked to <laughs> Trump voters and supporters all over the country. You were at the Republican National Convention in July speaking to um, the base. But I'm wondering how indicative this viewpoint is. What's your take? Yeah, I think that part of it is about personality, honestly, that they identify with Trump. They identify with his personality. They identify with how he speaks, his rhetoric, his bluster and his promises. This man that we spoke to in Springfield, he lives there. And um, this the threats were affecting him and affecting him so much that he turned up for um, a listening session about what was happening in the town. Um, but in the end, he likes Trump and feels the way that Trump speaks, the way that he acts resonates with him. So that's why he still supports him. And that's what I see with a lot of Trump supporters. This idea that um, Trump has talked about deporting undocumented immigrants in the U.S. And it is part of the Republican Party platform. Uh, I can say this. Uh, we will do large deportations from Springfield, Ohio large deportations. We're going to get these people out. And at the Republican convention, at, so just to give a bit of background at conventions, the party, um, the convention organizers will have signs ready for people to hold up during speeches. And they're um, laid out on um, seats at the convention. And one of the signs was um, it said on the sign, mass deportations now. And that was one of the signs that people held up during speeches one of the nights of the convention. Wow. This is part of the Republican Party platform. And people explained it. Like, to me, I am the daughter of immigrants. When I see something like that, I find it very alarming. And the way Trump um, ha is campaigning is that he wants to deport also um immigrants who are in the U.S. legally, including the Haitians who are in Springfield. And not just Springfield, but in other um, towns, boroughs, and states. Mm. What's interesting in this case is that there's a lot of talk from both Trump and Vance about these Haitians not belonging here, destroying the fabric of Springfield. Do you think Springfield will ever be the same? I don't think. The fact is, and I'll say it now, you have to get them the hell out. You have to get them out. I'm sorry. To get them out. Can't have it. Can't have it. They've destroyed it. The Haitian community is fighting back in a very uniquely American way. And that is by filing suit. So on Tuesday, an immigrant advocacy group filed a criminal complaint against Trump and Vance, the Haitian Bridge Alliance. And they said the candidates have a direct impact in fueling the 33 bomb threats Springfield has received in these past few weeks. They said, quote, like those who falsely sh shout fire in a crowded theater, Trump and Vance do not color within the lines of the First Amendment. They commit criminal acts, end quote. What do you make of this development? How angry were people? Because I know they were scared to talk, but is there an anger and a push to do something about this? You know, I think that um, people are really angry and they are really scared. And um, I spoke to somebody who was so scared that um, when he was 
speaking to me, he started crying. Like he, he had initially said that he would do an interview. And then when I started speaking to him, a reluctance crept in because he was talking about he had been kidnapped in Haiti and he has faced a lot of adversity um, before coming to the U.S. And so I, I think that this um, these charges are indicative of the anger and the fear and um, that uh, Haitians in the community are feeling. And um, they, they are charging... Trump advanced with disrupting public services and with aggravated menacing. And those are things that it was pretty clear you could see that that was what was happening in Springfield. Schools had to have state security mm. brought in because of threats against them. And um, the Haitian Bridge Alliance has asked uh, Clark County to bring formal charges again, to bring charges themselves against Trump and Vance. Um, so the way that this works is that um, the Haitian Bridge Alliance is acting as a private citizen, bringing charges against Trump and Vance, but they want the government to bring charges as well. And so I think that it's a way of putting pressure on um, the Republican presidential candidate and the vice presidential candidate. Right. Well, since their initial comments, both Vance and Trump, instead of walking them back, they have doubled down. And as late as this week, Trump accused Democrats of wanting to inundate neighboring Pennsylvania with migrants. And then he brought up Springfield, Ohio again, saying that Ohio Springfield is destroyed and will never be the same thanks to the migrants. Has it been a reminder of what your job was like under a President Trump administration? And do you think that it's a reminder for everyone of what's to come if he wins in November? Yeah, I think it's a reminder that um, Trump as president, um, he enacted a Muslim ban and banned um, immigrants, refugees from um, seven Muslim majority countries. And um, that had a huge impact on, on the US. And so it's it's a reminder that um, Trump has focused attention on immigrants throughout his career as a politician. And the fact that he is doubling down on his comments on Springfield and sort of expanding them to um, the borough of Charleroi in Pennsylvania um, is, is I think, indicative of what's to come. Like, he's not, he even confronted with the facts about what's happening in Springfield. He is choosing to expand, to double down on them beyond Ohio. And Republican politicians in Charleroi have asked Trump to stop making these wow. comments. They, they, like in Springfield, they say that the migrants are welcome there and are helping out the community. And now I'd like to end with members of the Haitian community who you spoke to in Springfield. Is there one conversation or interaction that you had that has stuck with you since leaving? Yes. Um, I, I'll go back to the person that I spoke to who initially agreed to do an interview with us. Um, and then um, when I started talking to him, he mentioned that he is separated from his family and he is in Springfield to try to make a better life for himself and for his family. He talked about the adversity that he faced in Haiti, that um, he's a highly skilled worker too, the sort of worker that um, he, he works in a trade job. And um, those sorts of jobs are really in demand. He brings a lot to the U.S. And it was really... Um, it was really tough to see somebody going through that and um, to hear about um, just how scared he was. He, he did start crying and I just felt um, I could feel his, his pain. So that's, that's something that's, um, that's going to stick with me for a long time. And that's The Take. For more of our episodes, check out our YouTube playlist. That's where you can find all of our recent conversations. Be sure to subscribe to the playlist and to the Al Jazeera channel to catch more episodes.